let me now talk a little bit about, about immigration. Um, why, why do we not let in more Jewish people? Contrary to popular belief, in the face of strict immigration quotas, both the leadership of the American Jewish community and the Roosevelt administration were actively involved to save as many Jews as they reasonably could, and I'm underlying reasonably could, given all these political problems, prior to the outbreak of World War II in September 1939, and more importantly, the fall of France in June of 1940. I mean, some of you here are old enough to remember it. I wasn't born. But the idea that Hitler could be marching under the Eiffel Tower, I mean, this shocked America more than anything. I mean, the idea that France had collapsed. Um, and so, but these are some statistics that you need to know. And I know there's a saying, and I am a lawyer, that there's such a thing as lies, damn lies, and statistics, you know? And so you can spin statistics any number of ways. Um, but I've tried, to be, I've tried to be fair, and I want to give you some statistics that I think are very interesting. 25% of all German Jews had fled from Germany between 1933 and 1937, all right? So 25% so of them picked up on the idea that Hitler was a dangerous guy. In September 1939, after Crystal Night and more German Jews leaving, the German Jewish population was 185,000, meaning 340,000 German Jews, 65%, had fled prior to World War II. Of the 185,000 Jews in Austria in 1938, 126,000 had immigrated by 1940. Between 1933 and 1942, 161,000 Jews came to the United States. Between 1938 and 1940, when things were really getting very bad, half of all of the immigrants to the United States were Jews. Now, I know half of 150 is only 75,000 people. I understand that. But the Roosevelt administration was, within the confines of these laws, uh, doing the very best they could. The United States accepted about twice as many refugees as the rest of the world combined. Uh, 200,000 of 300,000. After the fall of France in 1940, the United States and Great Britain, as I say, were stunned. Uh, and then after France, there was Norway, Denmark, Poland, the, the Netherlands, and Belgium, all within the German, uh, under German occupation. And of course, you remember the, the, the Blitz. I mean, it wasn't at all clear that Churchill was going to win the Battle of Britain. Um, you know, it's all nice to know that they won it now. But, but, you know, Roosevelt sent Hopkins over there to find out if there's any chance that they could actually win. Why should we send planes and ships when they were going down anyway? So we look back now and say, of course Britain was going to win. But that's not, what, that's not what Roosevelt's military advisors told him. Uh, so you know what, what London went through. Um, so in this atmosphere, uh, Roosevelt was not about to admit any European refugees uh, given the, the situation. Now, the thing that's important to remember is Hitler's chief victims were not the Jews of Germany and Austria anyway. Um, 70%, 70, depending on which statistics you read, but somewhere between 60, 70, 75% of German and Austrian Jews escaped and came to uh, France, Great Britain, and America. Albert Einstein came. Uh, Edward Teller came. All the guys who invented the atomic bomb that Hitler ran out. He called it Jewish physics. Uh, Found out about it later, didn't he? Um, um, the chief victims were the Jews of Poland and Russia, who, of course, could not escape. Um, and of the nearly 6 million Jews who were murdered in the Holocaust, 4,565,000 were Polish and Russian. So we have to keep in mind that the German army controlled everything after 1940. Nobody was escaping. Um, the um, the, uh, the people could not get out. We also have to remember, and I'm reminding an audience with people who know this, but there are a lot of younger people who don't know it, and that's what really worries me. You know, Pearl Harbor is something that actually happened. Uh, the Japanese had taken over Asia. They were a, a militaristic, genocidal government as bad, if not worse, than the Nazis. The Japanese murdered 20 million Asian civilians. They killed far more people than the Germans. I'm talking about civilians. They are the first people to use germ warfare, killed a half a million people. 
Everybody knows about the rape of Nanking and all the horrific things they did. There's nothing the SS ever did that the Japanese didn't do. They didn't have death camps, but they, I mean, the Japanese were second to none. And I, somehow we've forgotten about this. I'm driving a Lexus, you're driving a Toyota. Okay, well, we kissed and made up. But at the time, the American people hated the Japanese with a hatred that I do not think has been rivaled in American history. I think there were racial reasons. I think we didn't like them for a lot. You know, I, there's a lot of horrible stuff going on here. Discrimination, race, religion, and all kinds of bad things. And we interned the Japanese in America, which was a bad thing. And, um, but guess what? Roosevelt is now in a war in two oceans with Hitler in Europe and Tojo and this Japanese juggernaut in the Pacific. And, and the British couldn't seem, couldn't seem to fight over there. I mean, they lost Singapore. They, I mean, the, all their battleships were sunk. We, we defeated the Japanese. We, alone. Well, the Commonwealth troops. The more I've read about history, the more I realize Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the Commonwealth troops. I don't know if any of y'all have seen the new movie Australia with Nicole Kidman. I mean, has she got some great outfits or what? Um, I mean, the story is pretty weak, but the outfits are great. But no, but it's interesting because it educates the American public about the Japanese bombing Australia. Well, the Australians were not looking to King George uh, or, whoever, or whoever was in charge over there. They were looking to the United States for protection, and the Japanese were really on the move. Um, we were now faced with not one, but two genocidal tyrannies of equal uh, menace, in my opinion. The Nazis and the Japanese militarists had killed over 2,000 Americans at Pearl Harbor. During World War II, the Japanese committed genocide on a massive scale, um, and, and the American people uh, really hated the Japanese more than the Germans. And one of the reasons why I think Holocaust scholars are so frustrated is, I think they're just mad that we were mad at the Japanese and didn't go all out for the Germans. Well, guess what? They attacked Pearl Harbor. You know, the Germans didn't attack us. And um, when I say us, I mean Americans, because that's what we are. Uh, these are some cartoons that you might or might not be familiar with. Dr. Seuss, whose books you all read when you were kids and read them to your kids and grandchildren, drew these cartoons. What have you done today to help solve your country? This is Tojo and um, Hitler. Let's blast them, Japa Nazis. That's, that's Popeye there. Not a very good reproduction. But, uh, time to swap the old book for a set of brass knuckles. Rules for gentlemanly conduct in combat. You got Tojo and Hitler there. And I mean, the war in the Pacific, many of you know this. The Japanese did not believe in surrender. It was against their religion. It was against everything they believed in. So when they were captured, they would set off grenades and kill the American troops who captured them. If they were wounded and somebody tried to help them, they would kill the people trying to help them. So at that point, the American troops just killed them all. We violated the Geneva Convention. Every Japanese prisoner that was taken was just murdered. 